Hello, this is Lada from astrolada.com. Today here with Krasio Tasio, Babylonian serial astrologer. And we're going to talk about the favorite topic of all of us yes. women, about soulmates and twin flames. And is there such a thing, Krasio, soulmates and twin flames? I believe so. But also there is a very serious difference between uh, twin flames and soulmates. And I think that people are not really distinguishing this too and they are very very interesting i've been researching because it's the topic became kind of modern right now like uh, it's really very very interesting and it uh, i would like to clarify what the difference is and a very important thing is that these are not necessarily romantic partnerships you can see, find your twin flame or your soulmate uh, in every kind of environment not necessarily to like um, romantic partner, as I said. But what is, let's start with the twin flame. This is a very interesting construct. And I think um, the, in the Gnostic texts, and I think also the Indians talk about this. I don't know how they call it exactly. Uh, I don't remember, but they talk about this. And this is the splitting of the soul because there is such thing, because when we descend, we are our, this is something that is, um, perceived to be traumatic experience and of course we don't know about this because we come here with amnesia we don't remember any of our previous incarnations but the twin flame is when you're descending and you're not the, and your soul is being defragmented in other soul uh, pieces so to say so the twin flame is this particle which belongs to your soul it's like you your soul is being divided in two or more parts and the twin flame is this other part which is most probably incarnated somewhere else in the, um, and about timing i cannot talk because the linear time is not actually existing everything is happening now so somewhere now somewhere now there is your twin flame incarnated in other reality most probably so you can imagine our souls are being split not of every person most probably i don't know that but i know that this thing exists that the soul is being split into parts to have different experiences and different incarnations so this is your twin flame it is like the part of your soul it's the twin soul and this is not a soulmate and as I told you, from very ancient times, people know about this phenomena. And um, the Indians in particular know. The ancient Rashi, Rashi, so they know, and the Gnostic texts, they talk about this. And this is uh, considered pretty traumatic. This is not a very pleasing um, event that is happening to us. But the thing is that you can meet your twin flame. We don't have proofs whether when you see somebody and you feel strong spiritual connection, this is your twin flame. But we know one very interesting thing, and this is already the astrological perspective that I want to give you before we continue with the soulmates. And it is that this is kind of a mirror that you have. It's a mirror of your soul. And guess what? It's a mirror in horoscope that we need to search for. Ah, right? the oppositions. Yes. It's a mirror. It's kind of mirror because you will, we, we will never know for sure. You can't prove this, but you will experience very strong connection with somebody, be it somebody you fall in love, be it your guru, your teacher, a priest, a friend, a girlfriend, whatever, in whatever, whichever environment in your life. You don't know exactly. Being your brother, being your mother, we don't know. Um, this is your the particle of your soul which is somewhere incarnated and maybe you will have a chance to meet him or her in your reality or in another reality in any case as we said there is no the linear time is an illusion the time has totally different measurements right it's everything is happening now so it's a mirror of yourself and this would be the mirroring horoscope so of course you can't know before requesting the horoscope of this person and then you see that there is there are this mirroring um like the ascendant would become his your ascendant would become his descendant so so this, there should be 
too many mirroring um, features of the horoscopes. Yeah, could, yeah, for example, the Sun of one is in Aries, the Moon of the other in Libra, opposition type of thing. I will show you later on a very interesting this is example. In, okay, in a uh, someone's Moon is in Libra, the other person's Sun is in Libra, something like that. Most probably, yes. There will be the mirroring effect in many uh, being uh, it completely reverse charts or aspects, but you should be searching for this mirroring aspects. This is about the twin flames. And I'm inviting the people to comment if they've seen such things because, because um, we can't prove it, but there are such horoscopes. But what are twin, uh, twin flames? Will they have good relationships together? Or? That's the thing. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It's also possible that they're not on the same spiritual level of, of, um, of the soul uh, development. Could be that they're different. Also because of these oppositions. So um, the thing is that they, they can meet and then separate. It's not necessarily that once they meet, they remain together forever in this reality. Mm -hmm. But it is it is a thing to consider and to think about. And when you have such experience with someone, which would be very intense, like you will say, I really I've experienced amazing soul, soul connection, but also conflicting viewpoints, very possibly, or not. So it's very good to see the chart and to see um, how your his or her horoscope is mirroring yours. Mm -hmm. There should be this mirroring effect for sure, because in every text they're saying it's your mirror. It should be the mirroring effect. I've seen charts like that, but I cannot prove. I, I've read um, that souls actually. actually. Wada? Oh, can you hear me? Wada? Hello? <coughs> Hello? 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 Yes. Oh, dropped out. Carry on here. Okay. No problem. So where we, were we? Yes, we were talking about this uh, mirroring. The, uh, be, and we cannot expect always this to be harmonious meeting or harmonious relationship, but it will be very intense for sure. And that is why if you have such experiences and if you've seen such charts, I'm inviting the people who are watching us, it will be very interesting if they would like to share in the comment section so that we see. Because I've seen a few and I suppose they are um, twin flames, but of course, proofs we cannot. The more, the more uh, statistics we collect, the better. This would be really wonderful. But all texts are pointing towards the same. These are mirroring images because this is like the mirroring image of your soul because your soul is being split, maybe two, maybe in more parts. So that is uh, what what is known. The thing with the soulmates is more known and it's very different. But once again. Uh, it's not necessarily, I think, this to be a romantic relationship. You're not always marrying your soulmate or you're not always having a relationship. Also, it can happen so unfortunately in this lifetime that we never meet a soulmate. Your soulmate also can be a parent, brother, sister, guru, teacher, whatever. A soulmate can be somebody that you really feel um, so your soul to be in harmony with and i don't think that you can you experience necessarily the same soul harmony with the twin flame you may you it in both cases it will be very intense for sure and deep and, and extremely powerful something that you will remember and may change your life but with the soulmate it's quite different and here it's more we have more information and, and much more statistics and uh, such such horoscopes I'm sure that you see all the time and we've seen a lot a lot uh, with the soulmates it is something about the soul or again in both cases it is the soul who is representing the soul of course it's the moon the placement of the moon will be the most important placement this is the placement that we start from also in synastry, right? So, but with the soulmates, I found amazing horoscope that I want to show you to illustrate uh, better my words. And of course, you may be get, can guess, this is Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. Always, always I had in mind that they were soulmates because they had very powerful relationship. They would uh, uh, divorce and remarry and all this kind of stuff. And the big diamond, everyone knows about the 
you know, the huge diamond that he gave her was the biggest in the world. So it was a great love story. And uh, they were together up until he died, I think, when they oh, re together again. All right. Okay. I think so. I think so. Yeah. But it was very, very. <laughs> and I will show you their horoscope, their uh, the, the two charts. My God, it's amazing. One second, I'm going to share my screen. And then you see what are the soulmates from my perspective. And I think whether you will support me. Just one second. Share a screen. Well, you're saying so. You're saying that soulmates are actually very more compatible. They're, they're the ones that you feel so excited that make you feel alive. I remember that being Suduno said, our spiritual teacher, both Krasi and mine, um, he said 100 years ago that soulmates are given to us rarely, maybe one every, what was it, 100 lives, <laughs> incarnations. Because he said, when you are, or once every 10 lives, I'm not sure. Because he said, when you get into a soulmate, you tend to, when it's very important, incarnation, and you have some very big missions so they can help you. But also because the love is so burning, so intense that you kind of forget everything else. <laughs> and he says, it's not good to meet your soulmate all the time. <laughs> and he says, it's almost like a reward it's given to you sometimes. or almost like um, as a, when you have a big mission that they have to help and support you for. Anyway. Okay. Well, this was very nice. I, I didn't know this. I don't remember this text, but yeah, it's wonderful that you're saying. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's quite a long takes that he talks about that how is it calling the soulmates i'll send it to you i have an article on that this is wonderful because yes uh it makes it makes sense because this is another experience again very powerful like the experience of the twin flames but it is another it is look at their charts chart number one that i'm pointing at with the with the scorpio ascendant is the chart of elizabeth taylor and chart number two with Pisces Ascendant is the chart of Richard Burton. First of all, the most basic stuff in synastry is that they're from the same uh, water um, powers, you know, they're yes. both water ascendants. It's already quite harmonious. They love it, you know, the water signs, of course, are in harmony. But look what is happening here. In the sign of Libra, where she's having her son, what you have is, is his moon only two degrees apart. Oh, wow. Yeah. And not only that, look at something fascinating. Where his son is, uh, her son is, her moon is making exact opposition, is forming. Not only that they're forming the uh, eclipse, so to say, but they're forming also full moon. You have two major exact... Moon full moon. They're making a sun conjunct moon and moon opposition sun. And I know that one of the biggest indications for compatibility is moon some conjunctions or oppositions to be on the same axis that's exactly that's but here not only that look they are having a full moon and, and this I, I found absolutely amazing i've never seen this in any other chart and also here you look saturn invisible in his chart and mars saturn is pointing towards this uh, guru like the one is uh, um like dominating over the other one in a, in a teaching and a receiving um, lessons and experience relationship. And it's really, really amazing. So only when you look at this, maybe you don't need to look further. This is already so overwhelmingly um, powerful evidence that these people are soulmates for sure. I am not sure if they're twin flames, maybe not, but who knows with this, you know, opposing images of uh, sun and moon and too many things are involved. So who knows? Do you prefer more to have the sun and moon involved, the moon with moon and sun with sun? Or oh, yes, I prefer the uh, sun moon moon sun. Yeah, yes, definitely. Like they are forming these eclipses of the souls, something that is very potent, mm -hmm. very very powerful. Of course, if you want further to investigate, you look at certainly at uh, Venus, Mars, to see how the romance is uh, going on in their lives. But here it's about the soul uh, thing. So even if, if this is not a romantic relationship, purely sun um, and moon situation can be, this can be a compatible charts of two, a student and a teacher or a father and a son or it's not necessarily together exactly they combine both 
But wow, the look, this is so amazing. Have you seen such thing? I mean, it's amazing. Oh, so exact as well. Within a couple of degrees, Bob. Yeah. And look. Sometimes uh, uh, it can be so simple as that. Just look at the sun and the moon. And <laughs> very, very. And look another thing. We know that he was very uh, wealthy. And look, his Jupiter and Venus are on her second house. So he was really... Um, yes, he was, um, his, her wealth is also due to his uh, own, uh, you know, um, yes, wealth. So he, and also the, the fact that Saturn was with the sun and Mars, they are, were in his chart. There was also in her chart, Mars invisible. They both have invisible Mars. Doesn't matter. Of course, it's important who was born in the day at night. Uh, this is another level of the analysis. But look what is happening. This Mars played such a uh, surprising role. And he was the reason when activated for their separation, of course. He was hidden and he was, he was hiding the surprises. And when activated, uh, this is why they, they were separated. But this is, of course, another story. Uh, so soulmates search for these powerful placements of the luminaries. This is number one thing to me, luminaries. Of course, the longevity of the relationship can be seen, seen through the placement of Saturn, definitely. But this is not the subject of our uh, talk now. It's more to see this soul connection that people have. And here they have definitely amazing soul connection well with the conflicts her, her north node oh um, yes and yeah. the sender exactly exactly i forgot to tell yes oh my god yes look that, that's very because the nodes are very karmic and uh that's when you see uh, nodes of one connecting to the ascendant or sun or moon of the other oh my god these are so strong as well another thing i forgot to tell you uh, the first visibility of his Venus happened in uh, Taurus, her descendant. Oh, wow. So, yes, yes. that's the, the ancient Babylonian method that you see where Venus became visible in a horoscope before their birth or after their birth, depending if their Venus is visible and invisible at the moment. And then whatever Venus is born, the year that they are born, uh, before that or after, depending, this person becomes, whatever, whatever Venus is born, so for him, you know, you see his Venus is in Sagittarius here, but Venus became visible uh, months earlier before he was born in the sign of Taurus, or after that, I'm not sure, maybe before that, yeah, or after. Sh should be after, I think, after. Okay. For him, it's after. Uh, yes, yes. It's a visible Venus already. He's with the uh, So maybe it was before, so it doesn't matter, but it's uh, wh whichever way it became in Torah. So basically for this person, uh, for, for him, for example, Taurus, the sign Taurus will be an indication of uh, someone who gives birth to the love in them. So she has her descendant, the seventh house there. And you know, where was the visibility of her Venus? The first visibility was on her ascendant. Yes, you're right, it was before birth. It happened on the sign of um, Scorpio. Was first of all, this is the sign happening on her ascendant. It will be a sign of beauty, luck, talents, you can imagine. And she was very lucky. And Not then, with her marriages, but she was lucky. <laughs> well, it was in Scorpio, so it had its, this <laughs> energy. Yes, yes, but look, uh, his Scorpio is ruling his ninth house. It is again in harmony with his ascendant. So there is a lot of harmony in, the, in these two charts. And this harmony comes, of course, always from the malefic planets, Mars, Saturn with his son, which interfere directly with the conjunction that they have, that they form with her moon, his son, also here. Her Mars is making opposition to his moon. That's why they had these uh, passionate conflicts, divorces, remarriages, and all this kind of stuff. Oh, wow, yeah. His Mars to her moon, yes. Uh, sorry. His Mars yes, yes. Moon, yeah, wow. <laughs> yes. 
so it explains wow oh, thank you <laughs> So it's, it's very interesting, right? I think these two horoscopes are a wonderful example. Soulmates, but of course, it's not an easy, uh, it was not an easy relationship, and we see why. Oh, by the way, Crassie is offering a discount on her compatibility readings just for the next 10 days. So if you're interested to check your compatibility with someone or see where your Venus became visible, because, because some people are like me, born with invisible Venus. And when I turned 20 something, my Venus became invisible visible for the first time uh, when I turned 20 something. So it means 20 few days, 23 days after my birth, it becomes visible. And that's when I finally started, had a decent relationship. Before that was, you know, nightmare. And Krasi, we were talking before that with him. She was saying, how do you use the visibility and visibility of Venus? And she says, tell me about a man, for example. Say a man's been, what were you telling me before? Can you give me the example? Um, we were talking about the, uh, the invisibility, that it is another nature. If this is what you're referring to, I'm not no, sure. No, no. About uh, when, I, when you said, for example, if a man, his Venus has been visible all his life, he's had marriages, relationships, whatever. It's ah, because... I know. Mm. Oh, yes, what? Sorry, yes, yes. yes. 50 becomes invisible and then he can get divorced. The love dies. You know, but for some people, I know women that at, at 40, they're still virgins, so they haven't had a single relationship because for, they've had 40 years in visible Venus. And then at 40 or 50, it becomes visible and they're like, or, or some of them, it becomes invisible when they're 30 or when they're 20 and for 30 years, they don't have anyone, you know, or whatever. And, and then it becomes visible when they're 60 and suddenly they get married then. So this is amazing that Krasi can tell you when your Venus becomes visible and invisible. Some people have their Venus visible all their life. You know, they're lucky. Some will have their Venus invisible all their life. <laughs> so. That is why connect with the, with the planet as much as you can. We cannot escape our uh, destinies if it is meant that you will meet your partner when you are 30 or 40 this is how it will happen definitely but still there is a lot you can do um with really connecting with the planets with venus especially now when when venus is becoming visible for uh, as an evening star just connect with the planet like connect with the divinity that rules venus it will be aphrodite 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 i don't know you pronounce or, or you can prefer to call it the babylonian name inana from uruk whatever you your, your or shukra like the indians would do connect yeah it's very important or um, yes the astrological talismans of venus help but also you have a destiny. They cannot change destiny. They're helpful. All these measurements and remedies, they're very helpful. But um, we have our destinies and we chose them. Yeah, we're improving. I believe that sometimes destiny can change, but you have to have such a dramatic change in you. For example, someone might have near-death experience, overcome cancer or whatever, and some, or, or some, they do such mighty self-work. They have a spiritual awakening then when there's a huge shift and usually it happens often forcefully in a, like or kind of a big transformation then you can change the fate but usually things are destined <laughs> yes yes you can help you can with your with a lot of work with a lot of spiritual work with really contacting the divinities that rule the planets like you know that you're having problematic saturn or venus you have to work with the divinities really you need to um uh, so there are remedies but once again we have our destinies for a reason yeah. it is a choice of our souls also that we came you you came with uh, the choice to have this husband these children they cho chose you for a reason it's a whole complex so instead of complaining we have to be we have to accept it and look what it is that uh, the lessons are and that this is God's will, and that's the best that our God or your higher self chooses for you. To try to find the good in it, to try to find the, the silver lining in every situation. I guess uh, with that, do you have another example to give us, Krasi? Or? No, I found this uh, beautiful. And um, you, I have many from my practice, but never so. Also, conjunction moon and sun, and, and also opposition, like such a beautiful uh, and to, to a degree, you saw two degrees distance in both cases. It was beautiful. Yes. 
Um, I think I also remember that it was very similar in Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. They had oh. his son opposite her son, uh, his moon opposite her ascendant. This, these were more like they had a lot of oppositions going on. It, the compatibility was all oppositions and they, that's why they attracted each other so much because she was lacking earth, he had a lot of earth, he was lacking uh, water, she had a lot of water. So they were filling in elements that each other didn't have with oppositions. And the opposites do attract, but they're also so different. <laughs> and there's a thing. The twin, the twin flame that you were talking about. Very possible, very possible. So yes, very possible to be, to be the, the, the twin flames, but I haven't seen the charts of Angelina. And, yeah. um, Seven house activation of both of them a lot, oppositions. But anyway, thank you so much, Krasi. If you'd pleasure. like personal reading with Krasi, especially on love and uh, relationships, and Venus, <laughs> because she's one of the very few astrologers in the world together with Truman Kolev that can see that to you uh, when Venus becomes visible and invisible in your life. Um, since, since this is a, a science, this is knowledge that was discovered recently, rediscovered is it rediscovered. It's not, it's not basically accessible for most uh, astrologers yet. Hopefully we're gonna make it knowledgeable for most astrologers. Mm. It, it, these are practices of thousands of years that God or the universe is allowing us to look into again. To this is a revolution in astrology. <laughs> so thank you so much, Krasi. And Pleasure, Wada. Thank you. Soon again. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.